Why don't we think of deadly animals? We usually think of mammalian killers such as tigers, lions, or even hippopotami, hippopotamuses? Hippopotami. However, animals such as these usually cause comparatively few deaths. In the search for the most deadly creatures on the planet, we need to think smaller. We're, of course, talking about insects. And in today's episode, we're going to look at some of the most dangerous that our planet has to offer, why they are so dangerous, and the effects that they have on the human race. <laughs> As any pet owner will tell you, an outbreak of fleas can be a terrible thing. Not only is it incredibly distressing for your pets, they're also not particularly picky about what they bite, and having them around the house will inevitably lead to humans being bitten as well, which is rubbish. When a flea bites its victim, it injects a very small amount of localized anticoagulants, which prevents the blood from clotting and allows the flea to drink its fill unimpeded. Unfortunately, it is this very anticoagulant that results in the swelling, pain, and itching that is associated with flea bites. Once a home becomes infested, it can become incredibly incredibly difficult to clear up. The eggs can survive for quite a long time in the carpet upholstery, and even if you're able to kill off all of the living pests, it's not uncommon for the outbreak to start again a week or two later. Now, while all of this is incredibly annoying, there is another, much darker side to the flea. Not only can a severe infestation be so serious that the host develops anemia, a flea bite is not a one-way process. As stated previously, as well as removing blood from the host, the flea injects a cocktail of chemicals which prevent the blood from clotting. Along with this cocktail, much more unpleasant things can also enter the host's bloodstream. Almost everybody is aware that the bubonic plague was spread by fleas and that now this previously world-altering disease can be cured by a course of antibiotics. But these tiny little insects also spread other viruses and diseases. Typhus, for example, can be very unpleasant. Although it can be treated with antibiotics, severe cases can necessitate blood transfusions. And if that wasn't bad enough, fleas can also transmit tapeworms, as well as trypanosoma protozoans, which can lead to sleeping sickness and Chagas disease. However, perhaps the most unpleasant medical condition, if those words aren't pleasant enough, is Tungiasis, known also as Pulga de Aria. According to the World Health Organization, this condition, which is spread by the female sand flea, starts off by causing immense pain and itching, difficulty walking, sleeping, and concentrating on school or work. If left untreated, this condition can lead to abscesses and tissue necrosis. In order to alleviate the problem, it's not uncommon for sufferers to attempt to remove the embedded fleas. Due to the fact that the places where Tungiasis is most common, and don't exactly always have the best medical facilities or tools, the removal of these fleas by use of, say, sharpened sticks usually leads to the spread of infection and, in extreme cases, can lead to amputations or even death. Although the majority of people see wasps as having no other purpose than ruining a picnic or an alfresco pint of cider, they actually do have an important part to play within various ecosystems. Although the adult wasp will only ever consume sugar, usually in the form of nectar from flowers, in order to feed their larvae, they will capture and kill various other pests such as horseflies and greenfly. The way they do this varies from species to species. Some wasps kill their victims, cut them into small pieces, and then take them back to their nest, whereas others use their stings to immobilize their prey and then allow their offspring to eat them alive. As well as pest control, wasps also carry out a small amount of pollination in their constant search for sugar. But although these creatures are undoubtedly useful, they can also be incredibly dangerous. Even the common wasp, which does not have a particularly potent sting, can prove fatal to somebody who has an allergic reaction to the venom. These people, when stung, will go into anaphylactic shock, which can result in death if not treated immediately. Unlike bees, who usually only get the opportunity to sting once and therefore use the weapon as a last resort, wasps are usually capable of administering several stings in a single attack, which makes them inherently more dangerous. And unfortunately, it's not just your common or garden wasp that you need to look out for. In various places around the world, there exist other, much more dangerous members of this particular species. Let us take, for example, the Asian giant hornet, more commonly known as the murder hornet. Although not quite as brutal as its name makes out, it is called the murder hornet because it has a tendency to attack and kill honeybees rather than humans which I suppose is nice for us. It's still an insect that is best avoided. Not only does it have a much more potent venom than many others of its species, but it also appears to have multiple ways of delivering that venom. According to several sources, not only can they sting in the traditional fashion, but they also appear to be able to spray their venom. This is a most unwelcome adaptation to any creature with eyes. In addition to this, the murder hornet is huge. The queen of the species can grow to two inches, that's five centimeters in length, and due to its exceptionally powerful mandibles, it can kill as many as 
40 honeybees in less than a minute. But as terrifying as the murder hornet is, there is one other, even more venomous wasp out there. Why nature? Why? Vespa lactosa, a wasp native to the Philippines, more specifically native to Luzon Island, has the most potent venom of any wasp species ever discovered. Just one sting from this insect can result in convulsions, decreased oxygen in the bloodstream, and blood in the urine. With a name like the Assassin Caterpillar, you'd be forgiven for believing that this particular creature would end up metamorphosizing into some sort of ultimate killer moth. But no. After it pupates, it emerges as nothing more sinister or dangerous than a silkworm. These creatures do not even eat, and as far as danger goes, neither humans nor animals have anything to fear. However, in its previous stage of development, it really is a rather nasty little thing. Perfectly adapted to conceal itself in the rainforests of South America, the Assassin Caterpillar is covered with hundreds of tiny hollow hairs. Simply brushing against these causes them to puncture the skin and inject a potent anticoagulant that is so powerful it can spread throughout the body and lead to internal bleeding and death. Although the average human would have to be stung many times for this toxin to be fatal, it is by no means unheard of. Most notably in Rio Grande do Sul in Brazil, many inexplicable cases of internal bleeding were eventually linked to the assassin caterpillar. Fortunately, avoiding contact with these caterpillars is fairly simple. As long as you keep your skin covered, wear thick gloves when handling them, and don't take a break to lean up against a tree while hiking through the rainforest, you should be fine. Although these creatures have proven to be deadly on many occasions in the past, there is actually an upside. Scientists believe that careful study of the toxin that the caterpillar injects could lead to major advances in certain anticoagulant medicines. So that's nice. The monarch butterfly, or Danaus plexippus, concentrated in North, Central, and South America, is reported to be one of the most stunning examples of the species. With a wingspan of approximately four inches, the orange wings with black veins, black border, and black spots make it a particularly eye-catching specimen. Although some people might think that decking themselves out in bright colors might be counterproductive when it comes to concealing themselves from predators, in reality they actually serve as a warning to anything that considers eating them that they are incredibly poisonous. The monarch butterfly cat caterpillar, which is similarly eye-catching, spends its entire life eating only milkweed plants. These plants produce an acrid milky substance containing cardenolides, and these compounds reach such a high level in the caterpillar's body that they even remain once it is pupated. According to ScienceDirect.com, quote, ingestion of cardenolides may lead to serious dysrhythmias, including second or third degree heart block and cardiac arrest. Although most animals instinctively recognize the warning colors and do not eat them, humans tend to be, well, much more stupid. Consequently, there are than many recorded deaths as a result of people eating these caterpillars. So, if you're planning on going off on a butterfly and caterpillar eating expedition, it may well be worth taking a couple of pictures of these things with you so you don't end up becoming an unwilling participant in an experimental antidote program. Or, you know, just don't eat f***ing caterpillars, okay? Triatomine bugs, also called kissing bugs, are typically found in the southern United States, Mexico, Central America, and South America. These insects, which typically bite sleeping people on the face or lips, hence the name kissing bugs, are particularly dangerous for two reasons. Firstly, the insect saliva can often react badly with the host, resulting in severe redness, itching, swelling, welts, hives, or rarely anaphylactic shock. The second danger presented by these creatures is far more serious. Kissing bugs often carry Trypanosoma cruzi, the parasite that causes chagas disease. For those of you who don't know, Chagas disease is a disease that, if left untreated, can result in severe damage to the heart and digestive system. One of the main problems with the disease is that it can remain dormant for several years. Although an infected person may suffer some early, minor symptoms, these usually pass and the infected individual will often not find out that they are infected until the damage is substantial. Interestingly, unlike several other diseases that are passed on by insects, this one is not transmitted through the saliva. Instead, it's transmitted through fecal matter left behind by the bug, and that finds its way into the eyes or any breaks in your skin. Since people are usually bitten during their sleep and the bites are usually incredibly itchy, the fecal matter is often transferred into the bite by the individual absentmindedly scratching the itch. Although the disease can't be passed on via casual contact, there are a number of ways that one person can infect another. It can be passed on congenitally from pregnant mother to unborn baby, 
years, as well as through blood transfusions, organ donations, or improperly cooked food that was previously contaminated. Chagas disease can be detected with a simple blood test, but as previously mentioned, very few people are aware that they even have the disease. If caught early, during the acute phase, it can be treated with benzodiazole and nifertamox, but once the chronic phase is reached, treatment revolves around dealing with the symptoms and not a whole lot more. Mostly found in the tropical regions of Africa, the tsetse fly is a large brown and yellow fly that has a predictable lifespan of about four months. During this brief period, the insect is capable of causing a huge amount of devastation. It's estimated that about 275,000 people die every year as a direct result of diseases that they transmit. By far the most deadly of these is sleeping sickness, or to give it its proper name, trypanosomiasis. One of the major problems with this condition is that, like Chagas disease, it is often not diagnosed quickly enough, and if left untreated, it crosses the blood-brain barrier and is usually fatal. Symptoms of sleeping sickness include confusion, sleep disruption, lethargy, and convulsions. Although there is now a simple oral medication that works if taken quickly enough, for many years the only effective medication was melasoprol, an arsenic derivative that was so toxic it actually killed. 1 in 20 patients. In 2009, a safer alternative called eflorothine was developed, but this treatment required both pills and 14 intravenous infusions, meaning that it could only be administered by highly trained medical professionals. Finally, at the end of 2018, a simple cure was discovered. This drug, known as fexinizidol, can be easily administered with minimal training and is now provided by the World Health Organization free of charge to countries that require it. As a result of this development, deaths caused by the tsetse fly have been greatly reduced. But it is still a serious concern, especially when the disease remains undetected or is misdiagnosed, which is not uncommon. So, up until now, the entries in this video have been presented in no particular order. However, there is an overall winner in the competition for the most deadly insect on the planet, and to no surprise to you, it does go to the mosquito. According to historian Timothy Weingart, the general consensus of demographers is that about 108 billion human beings have ever lived, and mosquito-borne diseases have killed close to half, 52 billion people, the majority of them young children. There's very little of our history the mosquitoes have not touched. So, just what sort of diseases are mosquitoes responsible for spreading in the present day? Diseases include malaria, West Nile virus, dengue, Zika, yellow fever, and chikungunya. Although every single one of these diseases has the potential to be deadly, it is malaria which takes the most lives every year. According to the WHO, malaria is a parasitic infection transmitted by anepheline mosquitoes. It causes an estimated 219 million cases globally and results in more than 400,000 deaths every year. Most of the deaths occur in children under the age of five years. Now, although work is still ongoing to create effective vaccines and cures for all of the above, there is, shall we say, a more drastic plan in the works, which is designed to potentially eradicate mosquitoes altogether. In Florida, an experiment is currently underway, which, if successful, will greatly reduce the amount of Aedes aegypti time mosquitoes. This particular variant of the species is known to spread deadly diseases to humans such as dengue, zika, chikungunya, and yellow fever. By creating genetically modified males, Oxitec, a British-based company, believes that they will breed with the females, the only members of the species that pass on the disease. As the males have been modified to ensure that any offspring they produce will die before adulthood, this should greatly reduce their numbers. A press release from Oxitec says, only female mosquitoes bite humans because they need blood to produce eggs. So the plan is to release the male modified mosquitoes who will then hopefully breed with the female mosquitoes. However, the males carry a protein that will kill off any female offspring before they reach the mature biting age. Males, which only feed on nectar, will survive and pass on the genes. Should this experiment prove successful, then there is absolutely no reason why it could not be rolled out on a much larger scale, potentially allowing the human race to win a battle that it's been waging since our species evolved.